Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Last week, kernel.org released the new latest and greatest stable kernel, and Arch Linux released it last night. And today, I'm going to talk about it because I had a problem with one computer. So, let's get to it. Right now, I'm in my main production computer. I'm running Arch Linux with the DWM window manager. And on Workspace 5, I have my web browser open up. So let's click it on. And right now I'm at kernel.org. So last week they released 6.17. Now Arch Linux never released 6.17. Well, they did in the testing mode. So if you were using the testing rebos, you would have been able to download 6.17. And then kernel.org released 6.17.1 and Arch Linux tested that and released it into the stable repo last night. So you can see here kernel.org released 6.17.1 on October the 6th, which was Monday and today's Wednesday. <laughs> okay. And then last night Arch Linux released it. So let's go to the Arch Linux website. So I'm going to click on this tab and I'm going to go here and just going to type in Linux. So you can see Arch Linux released into their main repository or their stable repository 617.1 yesterday, October the 7th. So I'm going to click it on and let's just go. So you can see it's 617.1 and let's just scan down. And they released it on at 5 minutes to 11 UTC time. Now I'm Eastern Standard Time. So it would have been 5 to 7 p.m. here in Toronto, Canada. Okay. So I didn't know that. It was released last evening, so I updated my computers this morning. And I updated three computers that are running Arch Linux. Two computers were fine. One computer had a problem. And before I close my web browser, just open up another tab. And I'm running the brand new Helium web browser. It's still in beta though, eh? And I did a video on it. Well, my last video was on it. And let's just go here. Can we click on About? And we're running Helium version 0 0.4. <laughs> okay. And now I'm going to go back to Workspace 1. What happened was is that, like I said, two computers updated fine. One computer, it updated. And when I was booting into the system, I got an error message. But it continued to boot into the system. I logged into DWM. I opened up a web browser. I had no sound. So I opened up a different web browser. I had no sound. So I had no sound in YouTube with Firefox and no sound in YouTube with the Helium web browser. Now, the funny thing is, is that I did have sound when I turned on my uh, Bluetooth earbuds. I had sound. I had no sound coming out of my speakers. So, uh, you know, I checked the wire. I plugged it, unplugged it and plugged it back in. Uh, I checked my volume control settings. Everything seemed to be good except I had no sound in my speakers, but my earbuds were working, my Bluetooth earbuds. So what do you do when you have a problem like that? First thing you do is reboot, <laughs> okay? So I rebooted my computer and it got stuck in the reboot process. And well, it just got stuck. You know, you go into the terminal, right? And you type in reboot, it started to reboot and it got stuck and I couldn't do anything with the computer. So I had to push the power button and it went off. I pushed the power button and it went on and rebooted into the system and I got the same error message but it continued to reboot into the system. I opened up DWM, I opened up two web browsers and again no sound out of my speakers, sound out of my Bluetooth earbuds but no sound out of my speakers. Again play with the wires, play with all my volume control settings, nothing worked. Kind of weird ain't? So you know what I did? This is what I did. <laughs> I downloaded the long-term support kernel Reboot it, and the system was fixed. Got sound in my speakers, have sound in my uh, Bluetooth earbuds, didn't get any error message when I was booting into the system, and it was all fine. So what I did was, I downloaded this kernel right here, which was also updated on October the 6th, this past Monday, and that fixed it. Now, why this kernel was working in two of my computers and not working in one computer, I don't know. <laughs> you know, is it a bug? in the kernel or for some reason is that kernel not compatible with my hardware in that computer or will it be fixed in in 617.2 or 617.3 
I don't know. All I know is that I tried rebooting a couple times and when you reboot, you get stuck and then you have to push the power button to turn the computer off and there was no sound in my speakers. And when I put that kernel in, it fixed it. I don't get stuck when I'm rebooting. I don't get an error message when I'm booting into the system and my speakers work. So now I'm going to open up a terminal. All I did was uh, sudo pacman linux dash lts just in case you don't know how to do this. And I installed the long-term support kernel. And actually, I'm going to do it right now in my real bare metal computer because I only have uh, one uh, kernel installed here. And really, you should always have two kernels installed in case something happens. You can't get into your system. You can always turn the computer off and reboot into the other kernel. So I'm going to click on I'm going to install this kernel. This is what I did with the other computer. And I can't show you because I did it without recording it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so then after that, what I did was this. Well, let's clear the screen. So what I did was sudo vim into etsy default grub. I put this command in. Hit enter. And this is what I did. Go down to the bottom. Took that out. Activated that line. And then I go to the top and take out this zero and type in saved. And I saved the file. Then, oh, and the reason why I did that <laughs> is that, so we have two kernels installed now, right? So by doing that, by changing this default, I should go back in there, right? <laughs> uh, I did something and I didn't explain what I was doing. <laughs> so line 54, by uh, activating that line, by taking out the number sign and activating that line, and then going to the top and changing line 3, the end of line 3 from 0 to saved. If you have more than one kernel installed, by doing this, every time you reboot or turn on your computer, it's always going to boot into the last kernel that you are logged into. So if you install two or three kernels and you're doing it for safety in case something happens, but there's always one kernel that you always like to use, when you reboot your computer or you turn it off and turn it on, it's always going to boot into the last kernel you were logged into, whether it be the long-term support kernel or the stable kernel or some other kernel. So that way, when you update your kernels, and your system gets updated and you reboot it, it's going to log into the last kernel you were in. That's why I did that. So if you have another kernel installed just for safety in case something happens, you won't be booting into that kernel unless you plan to do so when you're rebooting. Okay, now one more thing we got to do is clear the screen. I have to make grub. And I'm going to go into my Zesh configuration file. So on line 250, I have an alias to make grub. So if you're using my Zesh configuration file, you can just type in mkgrub and it will make grub. If you're not using my Zesh configuration file, then you're going to have to type in everything that's inside the quotation marks without the quotation marks <laughs> from line 250. Okay, then I'm going to get out of there. And because I have an alias, I'm just going to type in mk and we're making grub and that's it. Now, all I got to do is reboot. And when you reboot, you could uh, quickly you have five seconds to hit one of your buttons to stop it from booting. And you're going to go into advanced settings and you're going to click the long term support kernel. And then the next time it's going to remember that. So when you reboot or shut your computer off, it's automatically going to go into there. Now, there's another thing you can do. Let's just go back into there. If you look, want a longer uh, time count. So you can go into advanced settings to choose which kernel you want to go into on line four. At the end of line four, you could change that five to 10 because that's five seconds. You can change that line to a 10 or 15 if you want. I don't think you need 15. But if you change that number, you're going to have to make rub again. And that's how I fixed my system. And that's it. In this video, I talked about uh, kernel.org releasing a new stable kernel and how after Arch Linux released it last night, this morning, when I updated three computers, two computers were fine, one computer I had a problem. And the problem was I was getting an error message when I was booting into the system. My speakers weren't working. There was no sound in my speakers, but there was a sound in my uh, Bluetooth earbud. And when I went to reboot the system, it would get stuck and I have to turn the computer off. And I solved the issue by installing the long-term support kernel and that fixed everything no error message when booting into the system my speakers were working and i can reboot without having to shut off the computer and why it fixed it i have no idea and will the stable kernel be fixed for that particular computer 
with future point releases? That remains to be seen. And I also showed you in this video how to install a secondary kernel and how to change the settings for the timer when you're booting into the system and also how to change the settings so that we remember your favorite kernel and the kernel that you want to be default. So let me know, are you running Arch Linux or a Linux distribution that's based on Arch Linux? And have you had trouble with the most stable kernel, 6.17? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Linux Mensch.